Live from bustling Jamaica, Queens in New York City, this is JASDA TV, a ministry of the Jamaica Seventh day Adventist Church located at 8828 163rd Street in Jamaica, New York, where nurture, education, and salvation is our primary business. cordless I'm using this mic so only one that needs to be on Joel chapter 2 Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 the Bible says and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see vision I wanted to share with you for a few minutes on the theme or topic afterwards afterwards father we seek you because we need you we can do nothing without you. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart be acceptable in your sight and will be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Afterwards. Now there are certain kinds of events that happens in the life of humanity that we call acts of God. These events are so overwhelming and they render us so powerless that we declare our helplessness by saying God must have done it. Some of these events in the Western world are volcanoes, snowstorms, earthquakes, tornadoes. But in the Eastern world, they had what they called the terror of the East. And believe it or not, it's a simple invasions, invasion of locusts. Simple invasion of locusts. When you read the second chapter of the book of Joel, Joel describes the judgment of God in the analogy of the coming of the locusts. One traveler traveling in Syria describes the sensation he felt as he approached what he thought was a moving hillside. The hill was moving towards him. He was riding a horse, and he says the horse trembled so greatly that he was forced to dismount and to stand gazing upon the one. That he didn't even understand what it was, but the horse did. As if the whole mountainside was like a stream of molten mortar moving. In reality, he soon realized that this was young grasshoppers on their resistless march. 
the very dust of the earth seems to quicken and to move day after day as this ferocious and marauding army of locusts march over fields, march over pasture land, march over hills, and march over dales. Fire could not stop them. Walls do not delay them. Like death itself, they march, leaping into cities, running down walls, entering into houses through cracks, through windows, through doors, and leaving behind them nothing but devastation and chaos. Just, Joel, Joel said in Joel 2, it is as though the land lay on the judgment when the locusts march. Now, those of us who live in the Western world, we can't even imagine such a thing. Fate idea, somebody says, of the crushing grief which the farmers feel when he sees that march of locusts and he understands that his wealth will disappear when they are gone, that his years of hard labor is now in trouble. For in a few short days, he'll see nothing but a barren waste. As everything would be eaten away. In fact, one author says no squadrons of hostile cavalry scourging the land with fire and sword ever wrought such havoc as millions of young locusts on the march. Their noise is like the crackling flame. And after they're passed, there is nothing left behind them which the eye can see but withered stumps and whitened fields. Empty barns and cattle that are now living skeletons and gaunt sheep huddled in a sheep for joyal points out this devasta devastation, and then he points out a contrast. He uses the hope of spring and the contrast of the mar marching of, of the locusts as the horrors of winter. And this language expresses the truth, the naked truth. He said, uh, before the locusts, the land is like the Garden of Eden, but behind the locusts, there is desolation and wilderness. When they pass, everything dies. But then, Brother Montague, he says afterwards, Joel too, but afterwards, after the locusts, afterwards, after the winter, afterwards, God speaks. <laughs> it shall come to pass, God says afterwards, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes, yes. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young, measure, young men shall see vision. In other words, Joel yes. says, the hot wind will stop and the soft rain will fall. Yes. Afterwards, huh? yes. the gracious rain of God's love the providence of God's wonderful generosity and kindness will begin to fall upon the needy land afterwards. Now, some of us have been through the winter of life. We have experienced locust experiences in our lives. For sickness and, and death have, have come in and caused chaos. Our children have been in trouble. Our husbands and wives have died. Our bank books are sometimes left bereft with nothing in them and we feel hopeless and lost. But afterwards, God speaking to the troubled people of Joel's time, wanted to remind them that despite all they were going through in this world, he still was God and still sat in charge. Wanted to remind them that yes, the locusts may take things, but if you stay with God, he'll never take you. God will pull you through. He says afterwards, God is saying to his people today, fear thou not, for I am with thee. <laughs> Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I 
will strengthen thee. I will uphold thee, God is saying. When you read Joel 2, after talking about all the devastation, Joel expresses God's power in the verses that were just read for our scripture reading. He says, don't be afraid, O land. Be glad now and rejoice. Why? For the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals in the field, for the wilderness pasture will soon be green. Amen. The locusts have done taking everything, but God speaks. Don't you worry because I'm going to make it green again. Amen. The trees will again be filled with fruit, fig trees. And grapevines will be loaded down once more. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more the autumn rain will come. As well as the rains of spring. The threshing floor will again be piled high with grain. And the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, listen to this. I will give you back what the locusts have taken. <laughs> I will give you back what, what the locust has taken. So the, the devil has come into your life and has caused some chaos. Your son and your daughter has gone astray. God said, I'll bring them back home. Amen. Trouble has come and has taken everything you've got. God says, I'll multiply twice. I will return that which the locust has taken. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll return. I'll give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the cotton locust. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Uh-oh. You wanted to blame the devil. God says it was I who sent it. You see, every now and then, we get so comfortable that we start thinking we don't need God. Life looks so good sometimes that we, you know, we think we're on our horses and we're heading somewhere. And so we ignore and we forget about God. And God's got to bring an act of God into our lives to cause us to stop. God says, I sent it. I did it. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. It was, as I was sharing with the deacon, deaconesses, and the elders last night, it was the hand of God in judgment. Yes. And sometimes God's got to blight hopes. Sometimes God has to take health. Sometimes God's got to take spouses. Sometimes God's got to repossess cars. Sometimes God has to repossess homes because he's trying to save somebody trying to get us into the kingdom, trying to help us to understand that we are nothing without him and that everything we have and everything we are is as a result of him. It wasn't our smartness or our brains that made us what we are. God says he is our keeper. He is the shade upon the right hand. And he, he declares the sun shall not smite us by day, nor the moon by night. Because he shall preserve our soul. God says, I did it. He says, once again, you will have all the food that you want. Not all the food you need, but all the food that you want. And listen to this one. And you will praise the Lord your God. Amen. Not say, well, you know, it's because I have this wonderful education and I'm such a smart person, and I'm the CEO for this company, and ah, you will praise your God. <laughs> you will praise your God who does miracles for you. <laughs> I've stopped by to tell you this afternoon that we serve a miracle-working right. God. We serve a miracle-working God. And life might not always seem as if it's in our favor, but I'm, I'm happy to report to you that God is always in our favor. <laughs> and whatever life takes us through seven years of lean or seven years of plenty, God is in our favor. Whether we're up on the mountains or down in the valley, 
God is in our favor. Whether life is turning us upside down or right side up, God is in our favor. Whether folks are praising us or tearing us down, God is in our favor. Whether folks are on our side or against us, God is in our favor because God says you will praise me. Yes, 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 sir. And we'll praise him in good times or in bad times because we understand God hath not left us because God will never leave us alone. God says this, never again will my people be disgraced. Uh oh. Hmm? Never again will my people be disgraced. Then you will know that I am among my people Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced. Then, after doing all this, after doing all this, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Huh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see vision. In other words, that rain, <laughs> that's life-giving rain, we call the Holy Spirit. That rain will uh, fall. That rain which represents the Holy Spirit will fall, and it will get down beneath the devastation that the locusts seem to have taken everything, and it's all white, but the rain gets down beneath the devastation, and the rain finds a seed that lies there as if dead, and the rain begins to work, and pretty soon that little seed begins to stem and, and to grow, and before you know it, fruits, food, greenery. That's the power of God. And soon, 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 Joel says, the earth begins to live again. Amen. As if spring has come. What a message. What a message that is for the preacher standing in the pulpit. What a message that is for the members of the Jamaica church this afternoon. What a message. What a message God is saying. Listen to me. Following the sorrow of the shepherd following the dying flocks and the destroyed land afterwards, I will, I'm going to do something extraordinary. <laughs> I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You see, the coming of this life-given water, the Holy Spirit, the fall of the rain, cause regeneration and life. Notice what the Bible says. Your sons and your daughters. Some of you all, have you given up on your children? Because it just seems as if the devil just got them in a death hole and won't let them go. You, you cry at night, tears, because you wonder what's going to happen to your children. The Bible says your sons and your daughters. <laughs> the, the, the young then with their semen unquenchable thirst for the things of this world will suddenly find themselves desiring the things of God. Your sons and your daughters, your, your daughters who like to paint themselves and deck themselves and, and try all the glitter of this world will suddenly wake up and fall in love with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your sons and your daughters, your, your, your sons who appear to have no direction or purpose in their lives, boys living in the shadows as if they're waiting for trouble to find them and gobble them up. God says they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and they're going to be about the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ and tell the story of Moses and the Lamb, your sons and your daughters. The Bible says, believe it or not, they shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters. Oh, you all don't know how I feel when I walk into this church and see these young people standing hand in hand with us in ministry. <laughs> it broods well for the church and the church's future. But it says that God is at work. For that's his promise. Your sons and your daughters, they will not, they will not be minimized. We will not push them aside because God's promise is that they will be inter an integral part of our ministry. Your sons and your daughters will take their place by your side as declarers of the truth of God. That's what happens when the Holy Ghost falls. When the Holy Ghost is falling on a church, not only does the Bible say 
your sons and your daughters. Listen to this. The Bible says you're old men. <laughs> you're old men. In other words, you know, there's something about age does something to us. Age does something to us. Age sometimes causes us to get disillusioned and discouraged. We become stuck in the past. Lose our sense of vision and excitement. We are, we are so stuck on yesterday, we can't see tomorrow. And tomorrow terrifies us, you know, because these young folks, they bring new things and new ideas and new dreams, and it scares us. Not ready for it. And we wonder what's going to happen to the church. I'm happy to report to you folks, ain't nothing going to happen to this church. This church is going to triumph. And these children who you think are, might not be heading in the right direction, they're going to lead this church right into the portals of heaven. Because this is God's church and God is in church. Yes. Yes. And if you didn't know it, our parents were as terrified as us, of us as we are terrified of them. You're old men, God says. Some who have wasted their youth in riotous living. Listen to this. They will suddenly begin to dream dreams. Now let me tell you something. Generally old men don't dream dreams. Generally old men look back and are maybe perplexed or troubled by what they didn't do. But you get to the point you know, where you just think, no more dreams for me. I've done it all. But God says in the church... Old men are going to dream dreams because it's not us. It is God. God suddenly helps us to realize that whatever it is that we build, God has dreams for bigger things, greater things. God is going to do much more because our God is not an ordinary God. He's an awesome God. And, and eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has planned for us. So even the old men who have done great things are going to start dreaming bigger dreams. That must be the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says that's what happens when the spirit falls. Your old men will dream dreams. In other words, pessimism will change to optimism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Life, which they thought were ending, would suddenly become filled with purpose and meaning again. <laughs> and so somebody says, praise God for the springtime. Yeah. Praise God for the springtime. If there was ever a season that says to us that God is at work, it is the coming of the spring. If ever the voice of nature sings, it sings when the winter is past and, and spring has come, when the blades begin to push their way through the yielding soil, when the buds begin to break white upon the blackened branches, when the birds begin to sing their beautiful song, uh, when the lambs begin to bleed again. Oh, praise God for spring. Amen. Afterwards, Joel says, the earth will communicate the joy and the power of God. Hmm? He tells of what God is able to do. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Your sons and your daughters, praise God, is going to prophesy. <laughs> your old men, they're going to dream dreams. Your young men, they're going to see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, saith the Lord. And so what is the message for us as a church today? I stopped by to tell you that God's got big plans Amen. for Jamaica Church. Amen. I'm going to say it again. God has big plans Amen. for Jamaica Church yes. because the spring is about to come. <laughs> and God is about to do something extraordinary by pouring out his spirit. And when the spirit of God begins to work, I'm happy to say young and old, <laughs> praise God, men and women, all of us are going to move as one in Christ Jesus. And, and this city will begin to understand that the power of God is alive. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
They were all with one accord <laughs> in one place. And there came a sound as a rushing mighty wind as the Holy Ghost filled that building and there was a mighty shaking and, and these people who had become one began to proclaim the word of God. And that day, praise God, 3,000 were baptized. You've been watching Dr. Stephen L. Williams Sr., pastor of the Jamaica Seventh-day Adventist Church located at 88-28 163rd Street in Jamaica, New York. We invite you to visit the Jamaica Church in New York City every Saturday at 9.15 a.m. for our Sabbath school services and 11 a.m. for our worship services when Dr. Stephen Williams will speak. Or you may join our live stream services at www.jasda.tv or praisevision.com. If you'd like to know more about the Bible, please visit our online Bible school by clicking the Bible school link on our website. Like us on Facebook or send us an email or tweet to let us know how you're being blessed by our ministry. Thank you for watching JASDA.TV, a ministry of the Jamaica Seventh-day Adventist Church.